Hey guys, and welcome to JavaScript practice problems for complete beginners. And in this one, we're going to be talking about a function called get histograms or get counts of a string. And to kind of sum up what this practice problem is, is you're given a string and you want to count the number of occurrences of each unique character that happens. So for instance, if you have the string dog, each character dog occurs once. Or if you have something like good, the character O would appear twice. So the histogram of O should be two with G and D being one. And we'll see that in a second. So let's move over to the whiteboard. So before we try to implement this in JavaScript, let's kind of break it down on the whiteboard to figure out how we do this by hand so we can create an algorithm and then use that in our JavaScript program. So to start off, let's assume we have a string and it's going to say, hello world. So by hand, if you just think, how exactly would we implement a solution to return a histogram of every character that we find. Meaning that if we find three L's, we should be able to use that later on in the program. Or in this case, this string has two O's and all the other characters are just a count of one. So by hand, you'd obviously want to start at the first character. You find an H, so you want to keep track of the H somewhere. And we'll say that we found an H of one. So we don't have to care about that anymore. The next character an E. Go ahead and set it to 1. We reach an L, and we can go ahead and set that to a 1. We reach another L, so we need to go to this histogram and change it to a 2. O, again, we have a count of 1. W, count of 1. Another O, a count of 2. An R, count of 1. An L, so we have another count, which would make this L become three. And then finally we have a D. I'll just put it up here. And this has a count of one. So that should have been pretty obvious as to how to do that by hand, right? Just traverse it from left to right. On each character, we keep track and increment a count. To make this easier to see how you'd implement this in a computer, well, we have to loop through a string, which we should know how to do by now. We need to keep track of each character, which we can get by grabbing the index of that string. And then if you look at this structure, this looks really similar to an object, right? Let me change that curly brace to uh, an opening one. And then just put commas here, and that is exactly what a JavaScript object will look like. So what we can do is for each character we find, go ahead and update the key of the object. Plus plus to make an increment by one. And then if it's not defined, we'd obviously have to set it or set them all equal to zero and loop through the alphabet. But that's basically the overall way you do this algorithm on a whiteboard. So let's go ahead and look at how you do it in JavaScript. All right, so like we saw on the whiteboard example, we need to first declare a string. So I'll say const string is equal to hello world in all lowercase. And then also we need to loop through each character of the string, which you should know how to do by now. So if you choose your favorite way to do it, I just obviously I'll do a for loop because that's what we've been using in the past. So let i equal zero, i less than name dot length. And then of course i plus plus to increment your loop. And then for each character, we can just go ahead and print out the character like this just to you know, double check everything's working as expected. If I run this, it should be called string, not name. It prints out hello world one by one. So we know we're on the right track and it's good to kind of test as you're developing your solution. Um, second thing we need to do is for each character, let's go ahead and say we have const ch is equal to string of i. So for each character, we need to do something with that character. So if I were to have some type of histogram, so const histogram is equal to an empty object, because remember in the whiteboard, that whole thing that we built up was basically just an object where each key was a character and the count was the value of that character. So inside here, we can say histogram ch plus plus, but remember this won't work because some of these are undefined. So what we need to do first is if 
if it's not defined, histogram CH, then we need to go ahead and say histogram CH is equal to zero. So then at the end I can print out histogram and go ahead and run this. So now at the bottom we see in the console it's printing out the exact values like we showed in the whiteboard where H has one count, E is one, L is three, O is two, space is one count because it's actually going to be counting the spaces as well, and then W is one, R is one, and D is one. So then of course you want to kind of abstract this or abstract this into a function. So I'll say go ahead and write this function, get counts, and that's going to take a string. We can put all that code we just wrote inside of our function, and we can say console.log get counts of hello world. And then of course make sure you return it because you're in a function now. So again, when I run this same output as before, all we did was we took our main like script and put it into a function so we can call it on different strings at the same time. Um, and then some other things we should kind of cover just so you know more about looping is you don't actually have to use a for loop to do this type of logic. You could instead loop over each character index. So let i equal to, or sorry, for let i in string. And what that's going to do is allow us to do the same thing but have to write less code. So now I can say this, run this, and again we get the same output. So although you do get a solution once in a while, sometimes you want to go back to your code and refactor it as much as possible so you make it as concise as possible so it's easier for you and for other people to read your code down the line. So looking out at this code on line 7, is there a way we can kind of get rid of this? Because it's kind of extra lines that might not even be necessary. So instead, if I were to do histogram of ch is equal to histogram of ch, which could be undefined, or zero, and then plus one to it. So again, we kind of just got rid of four lines of code. And again, I'll go ahead and run this just to verify that it works as expected. And we get the same output down here, and this works because what it's doing is it's going to fall back on the zero if we haven't already seen that character and then we add one to it. And then again if you want to do even less code you could up here just kind of copy and paste that if you really wanted to. I'm not sure if that's the best solution. Um, but this is kind of just to show you that there's multiple ways you can write code and you should strive to find the easiest, most concise way to write it and not just settle for the first solution that you find. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our Git Counts practice problem. If you thought this tutorial was pretty good, feel free to like and subscribe. Otherwise, um, look forward for the next video. It should be coming pretty soon. All right, thanks for watching.